Okay, welcome to part three of related rates. 265A, math, calculus one, quest to college. I'm Joe Vasta. What we're going to be doing for part three is we are going to um, be covering problems that will help you in your homework in 3.11 with problems number 23 and beyond. These are the problems where you're going to start seeing the real world applications. So let's start off with problem number 22, which is found, you know, in your homework as well. It's not one of the assigned problems. I'll, I'll do some of the evens and you, you guys will do some of the odds. So divergent paths. Two boats leave a port at the same time. One travels west and the other travels south. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's the port. One travels west at 20 miles per hour and the other travels south at 15 miles per hour. So this guy's going a little slower. We'll call this distance X and this distance Y. Um, they give you some rates here. It says the one that travels west is this one that's represented by the distance x. We're going to call this dx dt is 20 miles per hour and the one that travels south is 15 miles per hour. So dy dt is 15 miles per hour. And in both A and B, they're, um, we're exploring the 30 minute point. So, you know, at time zero, they leave at the same time and they start going further apart. So, time is 30 minutes. You know, that's what we're looking at. And Go ahead and circle that in orange and circle this one in blue. After 30 minutes, how far is each boat from the port? Okay, so that's part A. We have to figure out how far each boat is from the port. Well, look at this. We have minutes an hour, so we do have to be careful with this. Um, 30 minutes is a half hour, and so how far does this guy who goes 20 miles per hour go in one half of an hour? Well, it's not going to be 20, but it's going to be half of that, which is 10. So x is 10, and it's a distance miles. We're going to do the same thing with Y. Y, he goes 15 miles per hour, but half of an hour he would only go 15 over 2, or we can say 7.5 miles. Let's go ahead and circle those in different colors. We have green for that one. And we'll bring out the good old purple that we said we weren't going to use too often for that one right there. Okay, so the answer to this is um, the westbound has gone 10 miles, and the southbound has gone 7.5 miles. There's the answer for part A. Really, we didn't need any calculus for that. Part B says, at what rate is the distance between the boats changing 30 minutes after they leave port? Okay, so those are the boats 30 minutes after. The distance between those boats happens to be the hypotenuse of this right triangle. And so we'll call that hypotenuse Z. At what rate is Z changing? 
we're going to look for dz dt. So maybe you want to pause this and see if you can get the rest of this problem done. Okay, so we have um, the Pythagorean theorem, which tells you that z squared equals x squared plus y squared. Um, we can actually solve for z by taking the square root on both sides, plus or minus, but once again, z is positive, so this is going to be root x squared plus y squared. We know we're going to have to do the derivative, so I'll rewrite that as x squared plus y squared to the one half. I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative with respect to t. That's what I'm trying to find there. And so I'm going to get dz dt equals, okay, I'm doing a little chain rule here, one half times this stuff raised to the negative one half power. And now the derivative of the inside der derivative of x squared is 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt. Wow, so that looks pretty complicated. dz dt equals what we have is we have a 2 on the bottom, the square root of x squared plus y squared. And then on the top we have um, just this stuff. I'll factor out a 2 here. So it will be x dx dt plus y dy dt. Looks like we have five variables in this equation, x, y, dx, dt, dy, dt, dz, dt. And we're trying to solve for dz, dt. Looks like we can do this because look, there's our dy, dt, and our dx, dt. And here's x, as we said was green. Y is purple. Uh, looks like we have some down there as well. Forgot that one. And by the way, the twos just cancel. I'm just going to plug all those values in here and find out what dzdt is because that was the goal. dzdt is going to be 10 for the green. The orange gets 20. The purple. 7.5, and the dy dt, which is the blue, gets 15. This is all over 12.5. Now, how did I get 12.5? I kind of worked that one ahead. I went and input um, 10 squared plus 7.5 squared in my calculator, hit the square root, got 12.5. And it, that's not rounded, by the way. That was exactly what it gave me. So when I put the rest of this in my calculator, I end up getting... 25 exactly. And um, the units are going to be, the length here is miles, and the time that we're using since we've been, we have the hours there, is miles per hour. And that is the distance at that particular time, a half an hour, that the boats, the distance between the boats is getting, it's growing. And at um, 31 minutes, this is going to be different, but they never asked for 31 minutes. So there is the answer. That takes care of problem 22. Let's go ahead and do problem 24. And maybe you want to tackle this on your own, 
Maybe you'll just get stuck after two steps and then you'll want to turn back on the video. I'm going to start this problem. Once Kate's kite reaches a height of 50 feet above her hands, because that always happens when you fly a kite where it's like directly above you, but oh well, this is, this is math. Um, if it were, if we were going to describe it a little more accurately, then there would be more trigonometry and it would get more complicated. So we have to start off with problems like this. So here's Kate on the ground and her kite is right, right there. But it drifts due east in a wind blowing five feet per second. So we're just going to go ahead and say this is what's happening to her kite. It's going this way. Um, how fast is the string running through Kate's hands at the moment when she has released 120 feet of string? Wow, so she's letting the string out. Here's Kate right here. So we'll, we'll say Kate. Look like that. And of course this is going to form a right triangle. And, and the kite is like right here now. Okay. So the one thing that is not changing in this triangle, so this hypotenuse is changing and then the wind is blowing the kite this way. The thing that is not changing, we're just going to assume it's not changing, is this 50 feet. Because now the kite is 50 feet above the ground over here, assuming the ground is flat. Um, we should probably label some things. Maybe label this one X and this one Z. They tell us 5 feet per second. What is that going to be? It says um, the kite doesn't go any higher, but it drifts due east. So it's, it's describing how fast this side is growing. So dx dt is, and it's actually growing. We're not going to put a negative on that one. This is 5 feet per second. How fast is the string running through Kate's hands? Okay, so that is a rate that we're going to look for, and that rate is going to be this, the dz dt. So how fast is that happening when she has released 120 feet of string? So what's going to be 120? Well, it's going to be Z. And look, deserves another color. So what formula would we use for a right triangle? And we have this. We use the Pythagorean theorem. Z squared equals um, 50 squared plus X squared. Z equals the square root of 50 squared, I think that's 2500, plus X squared, which is, this reminds me of the last problem in some ways here. We have 2500 plus X squared to the one half. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to hit it with the derivative gun on both sides, d dt, and on the left hand side we will get dz dt. That is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this derivative. The derivative of something to the one half power is one half something to the negative one-half power multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is 2x, 0 plus 2x. And then since we're taking the derivative with respect to t, dx dt. The 2's we'll just cancel right out. And let's rewrite this kind of neatly here. 
dz dt is x times dx dt all over the square root of 2500 plus x squared. The square root comes from this one half, it's negative, so I cross the line and change the sign. So let's see what I have here. I have a dx dt. Perfect. And I have x. Um, x. That's not so perfect. I do not have an x that I have circled yet. So I'm going to have to take care of that. Well, how do I take care of that? This equation right here. We know that z is 120. So this is 120 squared equals 50 squared plus x squared. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 50 squared on both sides. I'll do that in my calculator. And when I did that in my calculator, I got 11,900. This equals x squared. What does x equal? Well, plus or minus square root, we're, we've talked about this many times, it's just going to be the positive square root of 11,900. Now, can I simplify that? I don't really care about that, simplifying that, because I'm just going to go ahead and approximate my answer. I'm plugging things in here and getting, you know, how fast the string is running through Kate's hands at that moment. Let's go ahead and circle this in blue. And we did use the green right here. This is where we use the green. We put the green right there. But now we're not using the green here. So let's put this in here. We have the blue is square root 11,900 times the orange dx dt is 5. And then this is all over the square root of this right here, 2,500, let me just check this here, 20, 2,500, I thought I had done all this work, but maybe I didn't, plus 11,900, I'm getting 1, 4, 4, 0, 0, which is actually, if you take the square root of that, you get 120. But in any case, when you put that all in your calculator, you get 4.55, or we're rounding. So the book doesn't tell you where to round. Um, I will On the exam, I will tell you where to round. And this is feet, because that's what Z is measured in, per second. That's our time. And so that completes the kite problem. Let's go ahead and do, we're going to skip 26. We're going to, because it's not like what you see in your homework. And I'm going to go ahead and do number 28. So how many problems am I doing all together? I think I'm doing six problems in part three. And this is the third problem. Baseball runners. Runners stand at first and second base in a baseball game. Okay, so we have the bases. They look like this. Maybe we should I'm gonna actually make the picture over here. So here's a base, here's a base, base, and here's home plate. They also tell us that this makes a perfect square and that the bases are 90 feet apart. What happens is, at the moment the ball is hit, um, the runner at first base runs to second base. So here's first base and second, third, home. He starts running, and um, 
the runner on second base runs the third base. So what's happening is this guy's running this way and this guy's running this way. And they're asking about the distance between the runners. And so here's second base guy. He's going like this. And the first base guy, I mean, he's not at second, but he's traveling along there. And you can think of this baseball problem as this length right here, as this guy is running to third base, is growing. And then this length right here is how far the guy from first base is to second base. If he's right here and then he's continuing to run, that is going to get shorter. So that's getting shorter. We'll call this X. And this one's getting longer. They're saying how fast is the distance between the runners changing one second after the ball is hit. So let's just draw this. This is the distance between the two runners. This guy's here and this guy's here. Okay, and they're going around this guy. So this guy is traveling right here and he's going that way and this guy is going this way. And they want to know about that distance, which of course, this is a right triangle here. We're going to call that Z. Now, there are some things that we know that they gave us. Um, the first guy is running the runner on first base see the runner at first base runs to second base at 18 feet per second so he's running 18 feet per second which means the length of this side is decreasing so that side is dx dt and it's getting shorter we're going to put a minus 18 there We'll go ahead and circle that one in green. The runner on second runs to third base at 20 feet per second. So this side is actually growing 20 feet per second. That's dy dt is 20 feet per second. And I'll circle that one in blue. Okay, and then it says, how fast is the distance between the runners changing one second after the ball is hit? And then they tell us that it's a square, and that's a, the right triangle and 90 feet. 90 feet is actually important. We are going to use this. This right here, from second base to first base, is 90 feet. Okay, so we've got to determine some other things. That's going to help us determine X and Y. Y is going to be easier to determine because as this guy runs, he's running at 20 feet per second and one second goes by. So T is one second. Then he has run 20 feet in one second. So the length of Y is 20 feet. Now the length of X is not going to be 18. He's running 18 feet per second, which means after one second, he doesn't have 90 feet to go. He has 72. So the length of that is 72 and then it's getting shorter, 72 feet. You know, if it had said two seconds, then this guy would have been 40. That the length of y would have been 40. And the length of x would have been, you would, you would go 72 minus 18 and, and get what that is. But the, but the seconds were one. So let's go ahead and circle some more things. Here's x. And here is why. I think that might have been the hardest part of the problem. Right, other teachers may have set this up differently. You know, they would have, they may have been measuring this, and it would have been 90 minus x or something. But we'll just do this one way, and I want to start talking about several ways of doing these problems. So z squared equals x squared plus y squared. 
just like we do on all the other problems, z is a positive number, square root of x squared plus y squared, which is x squared plus y squared to the one-half power. Okay, dz, I'm going to hit this with the derivative, d dt, so this is going to be dz dt equals the chain rule, one-half x squared plus y squared to the negative one-half, and then we take the derivative of the inside, which is 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt. Oof, running out of space here. And let's clean this up. You can factor a 2 out of this, and that's going to cancel with that 2. So when you clean this up, you'll get dz dt equals x dx dt plus y dy dt all over the square root of x squared plus y squared. So let's see if we have what, what, it, what we need here. Y, we know what that is. X, that was the tough one to figure out, but we know what it is after one second. We have dx dt, green, and dy dt is blue. So we can just plug those numbers in there. 72 times negative 18 plus red 20 times 20 all over the square root of 72 squared plus 20 squared which I'll just throw that into the calculator and round it it looks like what will happen is this is going to be a negative number it's going to be negative 11.99 feet, because it's dz, per second. What does this really mean? It means when this guy hits the ball one second later, the distance between the two runners is actually decreasing. Now, will it stay decreasing? Not necessarily. It all depends on the um, speed of the runners and all that stuff, but that's what's happening. And that completes the baseball runner problem. Let's go ahead and we're going to actually jump up a few. We're at 28 for baseball runners and now we're going to go 42. Ladder against the wall. So in your homework you'll get a ladder against the wall problem. Let's see if we can do this. Maybe you want to try this one on your own, so go pause the video and then come back. So we have a 12-foot ladder is leaning against a vertical wall. There's the wall, and here's a 12-foot ladder. 12 feet. Um, Jack begins pulling the foot of the ladder away from the wall, so he's like He's down here and he's pulling this part of the ladder. Uh, hopefully nobody's on the ladder, but <laughs> they didn't say that. So he starts pulling the foot of the ladder away from the wall at a rate of 0.2 feet per second. What is the configuration of the ladder at the instant when the vertical speed of the top of the ladder equals the horizontal speed of the foot of the ladder? Wow. Complication. So we have X is that leg there, and Y is that leg of that triangle. It's a right triangle. This right here, 0.2 feet per second, happens to be what is changing. It says the ladder, um, Jack begins pulling the foot of the ladder away from the wall at that rate. So it's this side that's changing. That's going to be my DX 
dt. And is it growing? Yes, it is, because this, this length, x here, is actually growing. Let me just, so you're not thinking x is more than it really is, we'll do the white out here. And right here. Okay, so that's what we have there. Okay, um, point 0.2, I'm going to write that as one-fifth, but this is a matter of style. You can write it as point 0.2, this is feet per second. And we'll go ahead and circle this in green. Okay, um, what are they looking for in this problem? It says, what is the configuration of the ladder at the instant the vertical speed of the top of the ladder equals the horizontal speed of the foot of the ladder. So speed is actually the absolute value of the velocity. What's happening with this length, why it's getting shorter. So they want to know the configuration of the ladder when the absolute value dx dt equals the absolute value dy dt. Well dy dt, we're not going to say it's one fifth because y is shrinking, but it should be negative one-fifth feet per second. And that comes from this part right here where it says when the, in, the vertical speed of the top of the ladder equals the horizontal speed of the foot of the ladder, that's what they, that is what they want. So in, in reality, I have my picture drawn incorrectly. I should have made the ladder look more like that right there. Okay, so we'll, we're going to go ahead and circle this one in blue. This is kind of a weird problem. Your ladder problem that you get in your homework, I think it's more normal than this one. This one's kind of, it's asking for the configuration of the ladder. What does that mean? I'm going to go ahead and write out the Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus y squared equals 12 squared. I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative on both sides with respect to t. So 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals 0. Um, this is x dx dt plus y dy dt equals zero. I just multiplied both sides by one half. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in here. And this guy in here. So I have x times one-fifth plus y times negative one-fifth equals zero. I'm going to multiply both sides by 5x minus y equals 0, x equals y. So x equals y, that tells you that the configuration of the ladder happens to be a triangle where x and y are the same. If you remember back to your trig, this is going to be a 45, 45, 90 triangle. That's part of our answer. And we should say what x and y equal when that's happening. And how would we do that? We'd go to this equation. So x squared and y can be replaced with x so i uh, say plus x squared equals 144 2x squared equals 144 x squared equals 72 x equals the positive one it's going to be root 72 x equals 6 root 2 so so we have the um, the sides are equal, so we'll just say the leg of triangle is six root two feet, and that maybe that actually makes sense. That you know the the time when 
this speed is the same as that speed is when you have the 45-45-90 triangle. So that is problem number 42, ladder against the wall. Kind of had a weird um, question that they asked, the configuration of the ladder. Let's move on to moving shadows. Okay, and this is, these are all classic calculus problems. So it says a landscape light at ground level lights up the side of a tall building. There's the tall building. So here's the light and it shines. That lights it up. Or maybe I shouldn't have done that. I, well, there's a, this is 15 feet from the building. And there is a six foot tall man. Okay, so I'll draw the six foot tall man. He kind of looks skinny here. He is walking on flat terrain from the light. So he's going this way. Directly toward the building. This is the building. And he's casting a shadow on the building. How fast is he walking when he is nine feet from the light if his shadow on the building is shrinking at two feet per second at that instant. Wow, so this is another problem that looks very complicated. Let's go ahead and I think it's important to label our, our things correctly, our lengths correctly. But there's many ways, sometimes there's other ways to do this besides what I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and call the leg of that triangle Y. This right here is 15 feet I'm going to call this right here from the light to the man along the base of the triangle. I'm going to call that X because it says how fast is he walking when he is nine feet from the light. So in our problem, the snapshot is when X is nine feet. And that is our first thing that will circle in a color. Um, there's a two feet per second. Um, it says the shadow on the building is shrinking. And you can imagine as you're walking away, you know, when you're right up at the light, the shadow's big and you're walking away, the shadow is shrinking as he's walking this way. Um, two feet per second. So you try to decide maybe what that would be. It's gonna have a D in it. Okay, so this is his shadow right here. It's gonna be D Y D. T. So dy dt and a lot of people would say oh that equals two feet per second but it's the shadow is shrinking so it's going to be minus two feet per second and we'll circle that one in green. Okay, the man is six feet. Okay, so we'll put a six there. And what are we going to do? So some of you see that right triangle and in all the problems we've been doing the Pythagorean theorem, but we don't really have any mention of this hypotenuse. And even if we threw a Z in there, we could write the Pythagorean theorem, but we might have too many variables. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna point out the fact that this guy hopefully is standing upright. He forms a right angle with the ground and you see this little right triangle. It's proportional to this big right triangle. So with proportions, you can go like this. You can say the ground X over the height, the man, six, or we can say this leg over that leg is proportional. Now looking at the big triangle, we have this leg, which is 15 over the thing that compares to the man is this right here, the building, which is Y or the, the shadow on the building. So I'm going to solve for X here. I'm going to get 90 over y. One thing I did not point out is what are they looking for? They are looking how fast is he walking? 
So they want to know that how fast he's walking is actually going to be how fast x is growing. So they want to know dx dt. Okay. So what we have here is this is 90y to the negative 1. I'm getting ready to take the derivative. And so this is dx dt equals negative 90 y to the negative 2 dy dt there's a siren in the background so maybe they found out that I was doing math videos and they're coming to get us we'll just if they get any closer if, if you see me run in the tri the tripod tips over then then um, you'll probably have another teacher next week dx dt is negative 90 dy dt all over y squared here we cross the line change the sign okay so i have a dy dt right here ah i used the wrong shade of green uh, i can fix that Look. no one will even know and then y up oh, so here's the deal we do not have a y that is circled in colors but you can find that by this equation right here and I'll do this in different pen color this equation right here we have x which is 9 over 6 equals 15 over y because I need a y for that and we'll designate that color to be orange okay so what happens when you do this is you have 9y equals 15 times 6 divide both sides by 9 and y equals let's see I think it's going to be 10 let's see that's 2 and 5 and 1 yep yeah, so that's 10 so y equals 10 feet and so I'll circle that in orange and that's going into this part so we're almost done with this problem this is negative 90 <laughs> times negative 2 why is it blue I don't know y squared that is 10 squared so this is 180 over 100 which is 1.8 let's look at our units dx dt feet per second so this is the classic shadow on the wall problem that they have in many calculus books well now we come to our very last problem another classic problem of a jet an airplane and I think in your homework you have one with a submarine let's see how this works I know this section has been kind of long related rates is one of those things that people have problems with and so I felt by doing many many examples and bringing this up into three lectures we would oh my chair fell over uh, okay I'm just checking to see the visibility there it is okay yeah, why is, did my chair fall over I'm not gonna get into that okay but where did my flask go oh no I'll get that after okay so the altitude of a jet a jet ascends at a 10 degree angle from the horizontal from the horizontal <laughs> with an error speed of 550 miles per hour and then they're clarifying this its speed along its line of flight is 550 so this is what's happening the airplane takes off and then this right here is 10 degrees that's what it's saying 10 degree angle and the airplane you know is traveling there it is right there okay 
Um, I guess we will draw our right triangle here. And they talk about how fast is the altitude of the jet increasing. And then there's another question. So I'm going to call this H for the height of the plane. I'll call this Z, and it doesn't really matter, you know, I mean, just pick a letter, and then we'll call this X. Okay, how fast is the altitude of the jet increasing? So for part A, they want to know how fast this is increasing. That's DH, DT, let's see, part B, they ask, if the sun is directly overhead, how fast is the shadow of the jet moving on the ground? So this jet casts a shadow on the ground and it's moving. So that would actually be the same as how fast is X growing? So part B, they want to know dx dt. That's our goal. Okay, so a lot of us would think let's do the Pythagorean theorem but we may have too many variables and we may not be able to answer this with the information we have. We do have 10 degrees and it's probably making us think of trig and this has a dh in it so I want a trig ratio that has an h in it and uh, one that's maybe simple to take the derivative of if I have to take the deriv derivative of it I don't know if I have to I'm, I'm going to go with the sine of 10 degrees equals sine is opposite over hypotenuse h over z. And since I'm trying to find dh dt, I'm going to get h by itself. h is z sine 10 degrees. I'm going to hit both sides of this equation with the derivative gun. This is dh dt equals sine 10 degrees is just a constant. So constant times z is just the constant. And then we have dz dt. So this equals sine of 10 dz dt. Oh, and we never really wrote that down, did we? dz dt. That's how fast the hypotenuse is growing, which happens to be the speed of the plane. 550 miles per hour. Pull the color out. Oh, I pulled gray out. Oh, well, that's, it is what it is. Okay, so there's gray. So this is 550. Now, this is degrees here, so make sure your calculator is in degrees. This is going to be sine 10 degrees in your calculator times 550. I'll round to two decimal places. 95.51 and it's h over t so it's miles per hour which is pretty fast that is how fast the altitude is increasing now how fast is the shadow of the jet moving along the ground if the sun is right above well we're going to actually do the problem the same way except we, we want x instead of h, so we're going to use the cosine of 10 degrees equaling adjacent over the hypotenuse. And so it's going to look very similar. x equals z cosine 10 degrees. Hit both sides with the derivative. We have dx dt equals constant times z is just the constant maybe you already picked up your calculator and put 
got the answer because you probably see what it's what you're going to touch here. DZ, DT, which buttons you're going to push. DX, DT equals the cosine of 10 degrees. We know what that is. That is 550. And so what do we have? We have um, approximately you put that in your calculator, you get 541.64. And then once again, the units, miles per hour. And so that takes care of related rates, which was a big section. So it's not just a small little section. And that ends 3.11. I think the last thing that I want to show you with this is I wanted to say this before and I didn't point this out, but the area of a circle is pi r squared. Now if you take the derivative on the right side with respect to r, you end up getting 2 pi r. You end up getting the circumference. And I thought that that's kind of neat because here's here's the area, here's the circumference, and this is just by zapping this with a derivative. Um, we'll see you next time. Have a good day.